for this example, we have a calorimeter. I'm, I just have the problem blown up, so hopefully you can see it. So basically, it says the energy content of a certain food is to be determined in a bomb calorimeter that contains three kilograms of water. And so we're basically, we have three kilograms of water. We're burning a two kilogram sample of food and it tells us how much air is in the reaction chamber. So we're burning two, a two kilogram sample of food in, with 100 grams of air. And it says if the water temperature rises by 3.2, so in other words, delta T is 3.2 degrees Celsius, determine the energy content of the food in kilojoules per kilogram. And we're going to neglect the thermal energy stored in the reaction chamber and the energy supplied by the mixer. So I guess we're assuming that there's a, some, a mixer circulating the water. And we're going to, either that or they're in the reaction chamber. It's not drawn on here, but we're going to assume that the um, energy supplied by that mixer is negligible. And we wanna know what is the rough estimate of the error involved in neglecting the thermal energy stored in the reaction chain. Okay, so let's start writing down some information about our problem. We already have a rough drawing here. So the <clears throat> so first of all, it tells us that the mass of the water is equal to, and the water is here. So the this is the water. The mass of the water is equal to three kilograms. The mass of the food is equal to two grams. The mass of the air, so this is the air in the reaction chamber with the food, is equal to 100 grams. And we, the delta T of the water is equal to 3.2 degrees Celsius. So this time, instead of giving us the initial and final temperature, it's giving us the change in the temperature. And then, so we, we, what we want to do is we want to calculate the energy content of the food. So that's the first thing it's asking. So determine the energy content of the food. And then the second part of the problem is the error involved in neglecting the thermal energy stored in the reaction chamber, because we're going to neglect that at first. So let's write that down. So we're looking for the energy value of the food. And we want this in kilojoules per kilogram. And it also, we can also look up our specific heats. So we're going to the specific heat, and I'm looking these up at room temperature, the specific heat of the water at room temperature is 4.18 kilojoules, kilogram degrees Celsius, and the specific heat of the air is 0 0.718 kilojoules per kilogram degrees Celsius. So we're going to be using the specific heat of the air for the second part of the problem, but not the first. So, and a few other things we can note about our system. First of all, it's constant volume. So nothing's changing volume. So in other words, we're not gonna have any um, boundary work. It's also a closed system. So there's no mass flowing in or out of the system. So let's go ahead and make some assumptions about our problem. So the assumptions are, first of all, we're going to assume that the water is incompressible and has a constant specific heat. So water is incompressible, has a constant specific heat, and we're just gonna use the specific heat at room temperature. And I've already written that down. So it's uh, 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. Um, we're going to also assume that the air is ideal, so it's an ideal gas, and it has a constant specific heat. And we're going to, so this was given in the problem that the energy 
stored in the air in the reaction chamber is negligible compared to the energy stored in the water. And this was given in the problem as an assumption. Um, we're going to assume that any energy supplied from the mixer is negligible, and this was given in the problem too. And we're also going to assume that this is, uh, so this is a stationary system, and it doesn't have a lot of elevation, so we're going to assume that the change in potential energy is equal to the change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. So what we're going to assume is, so we want to find the energy value of the food. So I'm going to actually say that the water is a system. So to find the energy value of the food, I'm going to say that the, um, so we're looking for the energy transferred from the food to the water. So we're going to have some Q like that. So basically the energy content of the food is transferred to the water. So in order to figure this out, we're going to want to do an energy balance. And I'm going to also mention that I'm assuming that the outside of this container is adiabatic, so there's no heat transfer outside of the container. Um, so I just have the Q that's transferred from the food to the water. So basically the water is our system. So we want to do an energy balance. So we have Q minus W is equal to delta U plus delta Ke plus delta Pe. These two terms we've already decided are zero, and the work is also zero, so we don't have any work input or output. And so if we have, if our system is the water, we have heat transfer from the food to the water, so that means that we have Q in, and this is equal to delta U. So since we're assuming, and let's go back to our assumptions, since we're assuming that water is incompressible with a constant specific heat, we're going to say that delta U is equal to, and this is delta U of the water, this is equal to the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by T2 minus T1, which is delta T, which was given in the problem. So we have everything we need to calculate Q in. So Q, Q into the water, so the heat into the water is the heat lost from the food. So if we know the heat that's transferred to the water, we know how much heat was transferred from the food. So Q in is equal to 3 kilograms multiplied by the specific heat of the water at room temperature. So this is 4.18 kilojoules kilogram degrees Celsius multiplied by 3.2 degrees Celsius. So the Celsius cancels, kilograms cancel, and we get 40.13 kilojoules. So basically this is the energy content transferred from the food. So energy transferred from the food. So we have the energy transferred from the food, so but we want the, so this is the total energy transferred. We want it on a as mass basis or per mass basis. So what we need to do is divide that number by the by the mass of the food. So this is going to be so the energy content of the food is 40.13 kilojoules divided by, um, 
See, the mass of the... Actually, this was the mass of the water. The mass of the food is 2 grams. Let's go back to here. So, divided by 2 grams, and then we want to... I want to convert the grams to... Um, to kilograms. So I'm going to do 1,000. Oops. This is 1,000 grams divided by 1 kilogram. So grams cancel. And this works out to 20,060 kilojoules per kilogram. So this is the energy content of the food. Now we want to calculate what the error involved in neglecting the thermal energy stored in the reaction chamber was. So basically there's going to be some thermal energy in this reaction chamber and we neglected it when we calculated um, the energy transfer from the food to the water. And so what we're going to do is basically treat this entire uh, volume of the reaction chamber, including the food, as air, and we're just going to calculate the um, the change in the total internal energy. So basically, the change in the internal energy of the chamber, and also remember we're assuming that this is an ideal gas, and we're assuming a constant specific heat at, and we're just going to use the specific heat for air at room temperature. So this is equal to the mass multiplied by um, the specific heat of the air at room temperature multiplied by T2 minus T1. And then it told us what the mass of the air was. So that's right here. The mass of the air is 100 grams. So if we go back to here, this is equal to 100 grams multiplied by the specific heat of the air at room temperature, which is 0 0.718. You would just look this up. Kilojoules, kilogram, degrees Celsius. And then multiplied by, this is delta T, so 3.2 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 0 0.23 kilojoules. So if we look at, so we basically have um, delta U in the reaction chamber is 0.23 kilojoules versus a change in internal energy of the water, which is 40.13 kilojoules. So uh, 40.13 kilojoules is quite a bit bigger than 0 0.23 kilojoules. So there wasn't much error involved by neglecting the um, thermal heat that was stored in the reaction chamber.